Podcasting for Learning. In 2017, I accepted the challenge of producing a weekly podcast for instructional coaches and principals. During COVID, I expanded to provide podcasts for parents and then later added teacher-focused podcasts. With the support of Joe Jacobs, media director, and Lorraine Malinowski, my project manager who handles scheduling, and scores of guests, we are now celebrating our 500th podcast recording. I thought you might be interested in hearing a little bit of the podcast history. As always, thanks for listening. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Hey, Don. I am here and joined today by Joe Jacobs, who's the uh, media director for 678 Main Studio, and by Steve Barkley, who is the chief learning officer for PLS Third Learning. And we're here on a special day. We're coming up on the 500th podcast that uh, Steve and Joe have done together. And Joe, what year did we start this? Uh, started back in 2017. 2017. And Steve, uh, you had dark hair then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but uh, I didn't know what a podcast was when <laughs> when somebody suggested we should uh, we should we should start a podcast. So it was a uh, a time of very beginning uh, learning. Well, it's been a learning for all of us, and uh, it's been very rewarding for me to observe both of you in action and to watch how we've sort of developed a style uh, for these podcasts and the impact that they've had. Do you remember back, gentlemen, the first podcast that you did? I, n I can remember, not sure what exactly the first one was, but the early podcast I saw as an um, opportunity to take some of the initial work that I had done in coaching that went back a long ways and be able to put it out to people in a uh, new and different uh, de delivery. So I started blogging 10 years prior to that and uh, had all that information that I had put out in those blogs, but realizing that the podcast brought a, 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 new, a new audience. Um, and it's kind of a, a double new audience. So there's the new audience of the people who are listening to podcasts who weren't people signing up for blogs, um, but also a new era of coaches, uh, people breaking into positions as instructional coaches in schools who hadn't been there 15 years earlier when I was out doing a, a lot of the initial work in coaching. Joe, when you started back in 2017 uh, publishing these podcasts, what what uh, medium did you put them in? What what technology tools did you use? Um, I think we kind of started with mainly in-person guests and kind of immediate contacts. And as things started to grow, we kind of branched out and started doing uh, remote interviews. For remote interviews, we used Skype oftentimes. And then... Uh, when the pandemic hit, everybody kind of moved to Zoom. So that became our new uh, platform for doing interviews. Sound equipment, how, how do you handle that? Do you uh, Steve has a mic that he records uh, his part into. The guest feed is just captured off of Zoom and then uh, put it together in a uh, audio editor. And from there, uh, I edit them and then put that podcast into a hosting platform called Podbean. And from there, it would get distributed to all the major streaming services. And those streaming services have really taken off in the last, uh, whatever it's been, seven years. Yeah, we've probably watched a few of them grow uh, since we started. What's the biggest one, do you think? What, where do you um, think we have the most reach? iTunes and Spotify are the, are the big ones. Steve, what's it like to uh, have the impact that you've had around the world? Well, I... I think I've, the first impact to talk is the impact on me. And uh, if I go all the way back to my 
beginning days of uh, of blogging, uh, I remember reading that blogging was a great learning tool for the blogger. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so when I made that commitment, uh, 50 weeks out of the year, I'd post a blog. And that meant sometimes Saturday afternoon, I was trying to figure out what that Sunday blog is going to be yet. Uh, but it it's caused me to uh, to read and to listen with that thought in mind that this is something that I want to you know begin to share out with other people. So the number of uh, of guests that we've been able to bring onto the podcast, I I think is amazing, mm. and the uh, the the quick response. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I'm I'm just sitting reading a something that popped up in a newsletter that I get or a, 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 a blog post that somebody else has done. And by the time I finish reading, sometimes even before I finish reading, I'm dropping the person an, an, an email or putting their name into LinkedIn and see if it'll pop up and make a statement that I just read this piece that I'm wondering if you'd, uh, you'd like to join me. And, uh, you know, there, there they are. <laughs> An immediate response back. Happy to uh, happy to chime in. Um, we're at the point now where authors are sending us uh, press releases on their on their books and asking us to consider um, having them come on. That's uh, it's been a, a, a neat uh, a, a, a neat piece to to uh, know that you're assisting and making it easier for more people to find out about those opportunities and information. And it's actually so nice to have you in person here because uh, Steve uh, lives outside of Zurich, Switzerland. So, uh, Joe, the technology is a little easier, I think, uh, when we're all in the same room. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're getting things ready, Joe, and Steve's in Zurich and you're in Buffalo, New York, um, and you bring in a a West Coast West Coast author or educator. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be a logistics challenge. Yeah, a lot of different uh, time zones, a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, you know conversations to get things set up, but uh, it all goes off without a hitch. I would say. I, I would say ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, it's really it really is amazing. <laughs> yeah. it really is it amazing. Really works out. And to be on five hundred. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what are you going to do to celebrate, Steve? Probably work on the five hundred and one <laughs> uh, uh, podcast. Uh, be waiting to get a note from Joe saying, I need one for Thursday, uh, kind of thing. Uh, it, it was just a, a recent uh, one that I that I got excited about that I think is neat. Um, I connected with uh, a uh, Ed Service Center, IU here in Pennsylvania, who is doing some work for us on um, uh, AI and the, a course that we're offering for AI. And uh, they uh, agreed to come on, and we did two podcasts with them, one focused on teachers and uh, uh, one more on uh, coaches and administrators. And uh, got a a note back from uh, a client of mine in uh, Tunisia who listened to the podcast and uh, got in touch with the uh, people that we had on the podcast and they're now doing a uh, workshop for the school in uh, Tunisia because they got connected to them by being on, on, on the podcast. So that's kind of a, a, a neat opportunity to play to make those kinds of things happen. The technology for me is remarkable and for you as well. I think Joe's grown up with more of it than we had for sure. Um, but in my career, um, which started before fax machines and the, I- the idea that you can get your voice heard um, over the internet throughout the world is to me very uh, moving, very impactful. I was down in Central America in 1993 talking about the internet with people and they thought I was some kind of wild three-headed <laughs> magician, who, you know, that, it's it's coming, it's coming, and uh, it, it sure has uh, arrived. And uh, what a wonderful tool to be able to have the ability to uh, work with, 
educators around the world, to have an impact uh, around the world. I think we'll take a moment here to uh, congratulate each other. And uh, let me say, uh, uh, Steve and Joe, uh, congratulations on your uh, 500th podcast. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Much appreciated. It's been and, an honor and a pleasure for me. And yeah, uh, fun as well as yes, fun, fun. fun as well as uh, as learning the, the the number of people that we've had a chance to uh, chance to connect with. Absolutely. When you get a, a just a curiosity question, do, when you get a a, a guest, um, is it a natural feeling when you're when you're interviewing? Can you feel it in the moment, or do you have a lot of prepared questions, Steve? I have very few prepared questions. Um, I um, my, my preference, if it's somebody that I haven't read something that that, that they've written about, I'll I'll uh, I'll request that we do a uh, a pre call, and uh, I'll I'll just kind of get to know them and and get them comfortable. And at most, I have maybe four or five questions that I send them in advance saying that I'll play off of, of these, but the majority of the conversation flows once we get started. It's pretty amazing to watch. I'll see Steve's few questions he sends to the guest and we'll kind of start off with those, but I'd say probably five to 10 minutes into the podcast we're we're off script and we're going into (laughs) some really interesting areas and it's interesting to watch. It's a gift. It is definitely a gift. <laughs> well, it, it it actually fixed the uh, the coaching piece. So my, you know my 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 common story with uh, with coaching when I'm doing a training and and I'm looking for a volunteer to conference with me in front of the group, and somebody will volunteer and then they'll ask me if I could give them the questions in advance, and I say no, I can't. You know why? And they say no, and I said, well, because I don't know what the second question is going to be until I hear the answer to your first one, because the coaching part of it is following you. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I carry that same thing into the into, into the podcast. I, I don't go into the podcast with a specific point that I'm looking to get to. When, when I have a guest on, my my goal is to get the guest opinion out. Now, equally, in doing the podcast, my opinion comes out. And then sure. we've now entered into a conversation uh, back and forth between the two of us. So you're an agenda abuser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an agenda abuser as well. You know, there are, it's a rough outline. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh an idea that uh, can grow naturally. People feel if, you know, if I know three or four questions that if, if I get asked one of those questions, I'm going to be okay. And I'm not going to ask you a question that, that I'm not, the, any other question I ask you, I'm going to be following something you've already said. So if I'm following something you've already said, you're, you're, mo- you're more than happy to continue that piece of the conversation. Joe, does that enhance the ability to edit or is it more challenging? Um, it's it's not more challenging. I'll tell you my favorite Joe edit story. <laughs> and that is uh, a, a person we had on as a guest gave a perfect non-example that her daughter's basketball coach had illustrated. <laughs> and then an hour after the podcast had finished, an email came in saying, I had some second thoughts about that example. No, take that out. <laughs> and it's probably not a good thing for my yeah. daughter's basketball career <laughs> for that to be out there on the airwaves. And Joe was able to go back and slide from one question into another question. And so that's the example we usually tell people if they're they're a little bit nervous. You know, I, I brag on Joe's cut and splice abilities, right. which makes people a lot more comfortable to just let the uh, let the podcast flow. Yeah, we're, we have uh, experienced that, and that's that's the great thing about uh, editing. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. does allow you to be more more natural. Yeah, for sure. Compared to a uh, a, a, a fixed interview where you looking that you that you've got to follow that, script. it gives you an appreciation for uh, people that really do this, right. and uh, how if you're doing it live and there's not editing. That's a, that's a pretty big challenge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, uh, I think the podcast 
format has, in my mind, uh, exploded beyond any of my wildest thoughts of all the things I thought of in the technology area. Uh, I think the podcasts are the most surprising. Uh, they're really omnipresent and uh, pick a topic. Uh, but it's, for me, uh, still a uh, labor of love to uh, assist in any way to get these, uh, to get educators heard. I think that's I think that's uh, an important piece too. If you, if you look at the guests who've been on our podcast, um, so while there's authors who've been on there, there's uh, instructional coaches, there's administrators and instructional coaches as as teams, mm -hmm. um, and there's classroom teachers who happen to have shared something interesting that I was able to catch somewhere and invite them on. As well as we uh, added the uh, uh, parent podcast in during um, during uh, COVID, yeah. Uh, so that brought a, a group of speakers on that we otherwise wouldn't have been uh, uh, speaking with. That's fantastic. Well, once again, gentlemen, congratulations on the five hundredth podcast, and here's to the next five hundred. Yeah. yeah, and thanks for creating the opportunity for it to happen, Don. I, I appreciate it. Much appreciated. It's my honor.